All right, last one. Means I can go on for a couple hours, right? It's no, one, no one's after me. <laughs> well, anyways, it's a pleasure being here. I'd like to thank the organizers of the workshop for inviting us. Uh, my name is Bruce Davis, and I'm with a company called Rocor, um, based in Louisville, Colorado. And uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about um, some work we're doing in conjunction with JPL. In fact, we're under contract with JPL to uh, help develop um, an external occulter for a, um, a star finding, a planet finding mission. So before I get into the details of the occulter itself, I just wanted to give you an overview of what we do at, Ro at Rocor, who we are. Um, we're a company based out of Louisville, Colorado, which is just outside of Boulder. Uh, and we have about 10 people uh, working full time uh, in, our, in our group, about six of them are engineers and the rest are support. And um, our main mission is to uh, reduce asset cost of uh, spacecraft systems um, during launch. Uh, and, and how, how are the pedals itself going to interfere with each or interact with each other in terms of how, how are they going to vibrate? Um, how are they going to be preloaded against, the, um, against each other and against the, uh, um, uh, the, the ring itself, the, the truss or the preload uh, positions around the center? So uh, what we've come up with um, in, in conjunction with JPL is a series of connection points. Um, let me look over here, it's more clear. Um, connection points to I understand and identify how those pedals come together um, and, and to identify the, uh, the different ways in which um, the system can be preloaded. So one method was, you know, do we have an external belt that um, contracts radially around the outside that, that we unwind uh, during a, a deployment scheme? Or do we have a series of um, uh, connection points on the inside that, that release one at a time, which would involve a significant number of release devices? Um, so uh, this just uh, to just give you a taste of some of the um, configurations that we've been doing our, our structural analysis with. Uh, you can see here's um, a few pictures of, of the mode shapes of the system. And I, I have two different ones in here, one in which uh, the edges of the pedals are, are, uh, are uh, deflecting. And, and toward the center, you can see um, on, the, on the right, you can see the center is deflecting a lot. So if there's anything to take away from what we're doing when, when it comes to a, uh, an analysis standpoint is that we are uh, looking at the system in multiple configurations in which you can uh, restrain it from the center um, with an outwards outside band or restrain it from the center on the inside and to understand uh, exactly how, uh, how these pedals are going to re react uh, during launch and then during initial um, on-orbit transfers and things like that. In addition, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, effort to characterize the, uh, those blankets and how that, that foam interaction from one pedal to another is actually going to be is going to transfer loads and, 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 and probably even more importantly uh, induce damping within the system, which would have a dramatic effect on, on the natural frequency. Uh, so uh, another, um, I'll get into a discussion on exactly how is this thing going to be deployed, uh, and we've been working with JPL for about two years now, um, coming up with different concepts. Uh, um, both a controlled type of deployment and then a less controlled type of deployment where there'd be some dynamic motion. And uh, just to get an idea, we did an early study um, where we did a dynamic model which basically take a pedal, a single pedal by itself, and then just release it and see what would happen. And we found that there was a, 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 very, a fairly large amount of velocity at the tip. And it was also uh, what you could probably be, uh, consider a, um, a level of, of uh, chaos within the, the tip in which once you have a whole series of pedals interacting with each other, because imagine if you have to, you can't release one pedal because they're all furled together, but imagine releasing multiple pedals at the same time and the tips are all moving, so if you have one, one hinge point um, for the, um, between the pedal and the ring truss, if that has a little bit more damping, then you're going to get a, uh, a non-symmetric um, deployment and then the tips are going to interact with each other and as I said before, they're optical surfaces, uh, uh, there's a lot of concern there. So um, because of this initial study, the baseline approach has, been, um, has evolved to be a controlled deployment, um, but there's various types of de uh, controlled deployments. One is that um, one that releases uh, the tips of the pedal uh, sequ uh, sequentially around, around the, uh, the ring, uh, which is one direction that we're, we're pursuing, and another one which we have a band that completely locks in the, the exterior of the system and uh, very slowly and with a lot of control releases um, the, the um, segments of the pedal part by part. Um, let's see here. I think I have two more slides. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I have to talk about the, uh, some of the work we're doing actually at Rocor itself. So uh, we have several pedals that were fabricated uh, in, at our facility now. We have a, 
um, a full-scale um, trust structure that we've uh, built. Uh, you can see here um, as well as, so, so we have this, this structure here that circular that represents the um, diameter of the, the hub itself. We can see we have a pedal on there that wraps around the hub and then we have a series of, only one show, but we have a series of offloaders that uh, allow us to uh, um, reduce the effects of gravity on the system. So uh, you, can take the, you can take a look at this um, concept and then I keep pressing the button. Okay, and then here's our facility itself. You can see these pedals. We have three of them, and we've been doing a, a series of tests uh, to validate our models, but also to identify um, upcoming issues that need to be resolved, such as you know, impact from one to another. Um, so this has been a, a lot of fun to work with. Um, these pedals are enormous. This is only a half-scale pedal on a, on a full-scale uh, hub, so it's amazing. You know, we're, we're going to be fabricating larger pedals soon to, get, you know, to, to wrap all the way around. They go a, about a I think 270 degrees around the whole, the whole system, um, which is a very large, um, large deployable structure to be working with in a lab. <laughs> uh, so. And then here's some other pictures of some of the um, interfaces that we're starting to work on. We have a design for a snubber stack. Um, and this, as I mentioned before, snubbers are the, the kinematic mounts that hold one pedal um, with respect to another pedal. That way uh, they can be restrained during launch. Uh, you can see uh, on the uh, left side is um, some of the CAD f coming from the vertical, uh, looking down straight. And you can, there's a lot of foam in there, which is why you don't see any gapping between them. But yeah, we have that green. Um, uh, cylinder that represents a mechanism we're developing to release these pedals part by part. All right, let's see. Um, I can see it better over here. So uh, the other thing that we're doing outside of, of um, the high strain composites is we're actually working on the spokes themselves, which are the, the wires that connect the ring truss to the hub. Um, JPL needed a, 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 um, a group that could design a system that had a um, very linear strain with respect to a low loading. And uh, we took on that challenge and we developed um, a preliminary uh, demo spoke, as we called it, that was metallic uh, this summer for their half-scale truss. And uh, we're closing in on some funding that will um, develop um, a, a full composite system uh, for a, a flight demo that would be performed. Well, not a flight demo, but a, a full demo system that would be formed uh, in about a year and a half to, to two years. Oops. So uh, in closing, I'll just go over, um, just give you a roadmap of where we are at. And um, some of this is kind of focused on our funding and where that's come from uh, and can, can, can give you uh, an idea for where we're going. Um, so our, our original contact with JPL started off with a phase one SBIR. Um, and uh, that in initiated some of the in, uh, first concepts for how we would furl and unfurl the pedals. And uh, that went well enough that we received a phase two and that was a, um, enabled us to build our, our hardware and start really getting into the details of, of this stowed analysis um, and, and that FE, finite element analysis uh, uh, system. Uh, we're getting ramped up. We're going to be working with JPL in the near future to uh, build a half scale unit, uh, a, full, uh, a half scale system that um, is complete in its entirety. So uh, I believe on that previous slide, I'll just go back to that previous slide. I, don't, I, I didn't mention that. Uh, there was a picture of, of this truss. So you can see um, that ring in that center hub is all performed at JPL. Uh, it was a phenomenal work of engineering that they did there. And then after it, um, part of that deployment was uh, contained four pedals, which didn't have any furling capability. They were just kind of rigidly attached. So uh, when I mentioned that we're going to be working with a half scale system, we're going to essentially take this ring truss and we're going to uh, do full furling with it um, is, is, is on the game, as the current game plan. And then, as I mentioned before, we uh, worked on, uh, did some initial work with J JPL on, on the uh, metallic spokes, and we're getting excited to ramp up with some composite spokes that we have some funding things in, in, in the works to see if we can uh, uh, start that fairly soon in the next uh, couple months or so. Uh, so with that, I went through it pretty quickly, but I um, uh, want to give you a taste of what we're doing at Rocor. Um, we're really excited to be working with JPL and as well as uh, this community uh, being here and, and learning what you guys are doing. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been a pleasure. So. If there's any questions, I'll take them now. Can you speak a little bit about uh, how you're getting the near zero CTE? Is this a purely a materials approach? Uh, yes. So there's, um, you can actually acquire um, 
a lot of carbon uh, fiber materials have a negative CTE, and then you can actually uh, offset that with other materials that have a positive. Um, on top of that, there's a level of influence that the resin itself has on, on the structure, because that usually has a fairly high positive uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. So it's really a matter of just playing with, with the properties and, and playing with the cure, uh, um, curing of the, uh, the composite too and testing to, to get that. But it's been uh, fairly well known within um, high-end composite companies that, that they can perform near zero CTE structures. So, go ahead. So that was the first time that I've seen a dynamic model of the unfurling of the petal. I'm not mm -hmm. really surprised it's chaotic uh, looking. I was wondering if you actually accounted for in that model that the hub is in itself inertially fixed. Because uh, mm -hmm. something I've always been a little worried about is as you unfurl, is that going to destabilize the spacecraft in any way? Yeah, you, um, that's a great question. Um, and I'll have to put out a disclaimer that I didn't do that model uh, myself, but, um, and I, I, I try not to use the word chaotic because, you know, that has certain implications, but the reality is it's an extremely yeah. complex system. Uh, uh, and there's so many factors that go into play, especially the one that you brought up that I didn't, you know, that it's free flying, free floating, so there could be some, some effects there. And, you know, you have 28 pedals, 28 this independent systems, you know, surely, and, you know, tips that are extremely um, flexible there's surely going to be some, some contact that's not characterizable up there. And there's no way to test it on the ground either, because, you know, um, so, so thanks for your comments. I hope I, I answered it in, in its fullness, but yeah, thank you. Uh, go ahead. What's the longest boom we can make? That's a, that's a good question. Um, it's as long as our oven is in-house, but we can find vendors without difficulty uh, to fabricate a boom that's significant, very long. Um, I know that, uh, I, I bet someone in here knows how long the booms are on, uh, actually, I'm not sure if JVST has composite or not, but uh, uh, come to us and we'll, we'll let you know. Uh, I, I don't, don't know offhand exactly what the longest boom that I've seen in the literature, but, but um, I know that, uh, excuse me? We've done them over, done them over 100 feet, yeah. Um, the longest we've done to date, I believe, is about four and a half meters in-house. Um, but yeah, I mean, they can, um, another thing too is you can splice booms together. That's, that's been done multiple times as well. So theoretically, it's, it's as, long as, you need, as long as your application, as long as they can st structurally handle it too, because there is a function of, of stiffness as you, uh, as you get farther away from the root. So, all right, well, thank you.